several headlines from around the food world. So if you're a huge fan of Top Chef, you already know that Seattle chef Shota Nakajima made it to the top three finalists on this season's cooking competition on Bravo. We've had Shota on New Day several times, and while he didn't win, Seattle is very, very proud of him. But a much different story for the winner, Gabe Irales. He has come under some scrutiny since winning the Top Chef title, claiming the $250,000 prize. So here's the deal. Viewers from the show started sharing a December 2020 story from the Austin Chronicle reporting that Irales was fired from his position as executive chef from an Austin restaurant due to his behavior and repeated violation of policies. Top Chef host Padma Lakshmi, who has also been a guest here on New Day, tweeted, as someone who has been sexually harassed, this topic is a serious one and merits openness. We filmed Top Chef in October of last year and we're not aware of the allegations now coming out about Gabe. Meanwhile, back here in Seattle, another iconic chef is apologizing for allegations of misconduct, sexual misconduct at his restaurants. Over the weekend, Eduardo Jordan took to Instagram to apologize for his previous behavior he described as unwittingly crossing personal and professional boundaries. Jordan is the James Beard award-winning chef and owner of restaurants like June Baby and the now-closed Solare. He was accused of sexual misconduct by 15 different women in a Seattle Times article. And get this, the Seattle Times reports that Jordan had actually appeared in the final episode of Top Chef, but was cut out of the show after these allegations surfaced. That brings us to our first guest this morning, Melissa Miranda. She's the founder of a popular Filipino restaurant, Musong, in Seattle's North Beacon Hill. She's also a contributor to Bon Appetit. Melissa has been very vocal on social media about the allegations against Eduardo Jordan. We caught up with her during a very busy lunch hour at her restaurant to get her thoughts on the future of the restaurant industry. You had some feelings on the news of Eduardo and, and when everything broke. What was your reaction? You know, it's not a surprise. I think it was one of the first reactions that I had. I got to see and experience some of um, the things that weren't so pleasant in this industry, um, not just from a, let's say, sexual harassment side, but also just um, how you take care of employees, um, which I think is something huge that people need to address as well. I think it's a, it's a really good point. It's something that a lot of, you know, service and entertainment industry have in common. And I really respect that you were really vocal about this on social media. Why was that so important to you? With the Willows Inn article that came out, it's always just been a stance that I've been pretty, like, I believe in that like when I opened new song it was important for me to create a space that wasn't like the toxic workplaces that I had experienced part of it was the fact that these are some of my really close friends and um at what point do we actually like step up and like talk about these things that are super uncomfortable you know what I mean um, so much stuff ha happens in the shadows and a lot of people know about it, um, but we need to make kind of a decision and a consensus that like we can't stand for this anymore. Let's shed some light on that darkness. I could not agree more. What has your experience personally been working in the industry? I actually went to culinary school in Italy um, and I worked in a lot of kitchens in Florence. Um, and the idea of a kitchen brigade is like such a thing that's like the hierarchy of cooking. And being a female and then being a woman of color in a foreign country trying to make it, I mean, I learned the language. I did my best to just like integrate myself in, but that is always something that you're faced with challenge. When I moved to New York, you know, oftentimes when I show up for interviews, um, people would think I was the host or a server, uh, never in the kitchen. Um, and so that's just something that like, you always question yourself in these kitchens, you know, and, and you talk about like the locker room talk that occurs that definitely all is there. Um, and there's so many times like that you put your head down and you're like, well, I've told, I've been told that this is how it's supposed to be. Um, and it's hard, <laughs> you know, it's hard. And then there's other times where you question whether it's because of your looks, are you hired? You know, it's like, is it based on my talent? I really 
identify a lot with what you're saying. I think a lot of women do, but I don't think any of us can really understand what it's like in your industry specifically. What is something you wish we all knew? There's so much. I think ask questions about who's making your food, you know, not just the servers that are the face, but like, do you look around and do you see happy faces? Don't just follow the, the food bloggers or the influencers, like maybe do some research about where you eat and how we support our communities. Um, I think that has a huge thing to do with why this industry is so messed up so is, like, is one media, you know what I mean? So, Lifting up people without 100% doing the actual research, guests just flocking to the most famous well-known chef, but you don't think about the practices that are occurring in the back. Like, start asking like, are your workers paid livable wages? You know, like if the menu prices go up, ask why. It's because we're trying to offer benefits. We're trying to offer health insurance, like corporate America, but as small business owners, it's like, who's helping us? It's not just quantity, it's the quality. How we do that is like education. It's education that this industry has suffered probably the hardest because of the pandemic and we're all trying to do our best. But, you know, I can only hope that us as a restaurant and not just a restaurant, but a community space that we can like continue to build, right? Yeah. Thank you that, for that reminder, both as a member of the media and as a consumer. Is there anything else you'd like to add? The work is just starting. There are a lot more folks in this industry that have done more damage than good. I think that it's important to listen to survivors, to provide ways for um, these folks to be able to have access to be listened to. You know, we're working on some programs as well for like, how can we connect people with um, counselors that have experienced this? And from there, how do we keep people accountable? Because at the end, it's about accountability because this stuff happens every day. And thanks again to Melissa for sharing her thoughts about this important conversation that the food industry is having right now. We'll be sure to stay on this story in the coming weeks ahead.